Okay, so let's go over some details, some back history. Got some some schmidgem on my my soldering iron there. I had to get a drink. Okay, so uh, the power supply that I'm using, you, you look. Maybe I can put a card over here or something, and recommend the video on the power supply, which you can watch and come back and finish this one. But basically, it is a GAN. It's a 260 watt GAN power supply, a cheap Chinese power supply that I bought off of AliExpress. It's got two QC 3.0 ports, two PD 100 uh, watt ports, and one PD 3.1 140 watt plug. So the backstory on these irons. So the tip is still hot, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, but the backstory is I first bought the HS02B, which is the small tipped uh, C210 variant uh, uh, iron. And it's great for micro soldering. And this is great for, you can do micro soldering with it. You can, it's pretty fine tip and you can get finer tips uh, for this iron and do micro soldering. Uh, the irons are exactly the same size physically. Uh, between the HS02A and HS02B. The only difference is the tips. That's it. That's the only difference in the iron. So with, uh, with that said, uh, this iron should be a workhorse. But the problem is, is most power supplies that you plug it into, it will overamp the power supply and cause it to reset on initial startup. Once the tip is warm, like it is now, you can plug it into that PD100 or the QC 3.0 port and use the iron, but uh, you have to get it preheated ahead of time. So you have to end up using adaptive power. So with adaptive power, what it actually does is it kind of tests the power supply um, to see and I'm not exactly sure how all of it works, but it's designed to ramp the power up on the uh, iron as it's building heat and set the power to what your power supply is capable of supplying. And so how it does that, I don't know, but that's what I'm told the adaptive power is actually supposed to do. I do know that every time you use adaptive power, whenever you're done with it, your power setting starts at a hundred percent but then it's usually changed and with mine and my power supply it usually gets changed to 96 percent which from a cold start still will not start the iron it causes it to reset the power supply not the iron the iron is fine uh, and i end up having to drop the power on the iron down to 65 to 75 percent to get it to crank up from a cold start and go on about its business from there. That works fine for me. So um, we have, if you watch all of my past videos, which if you watch the whole succession and uh, I think I've got like four videos now, uh, or three videos not counting the firmware upgrade videos, which each time I find out there's a firmware upgrade, I'll do a quick video on the, the upgrade which uh, speaking of the firmware upgrade, there's been many, many issues upgrading the firmware on this iron. Usually it is with uh, a Linux system or an older computer. Sometimes it is with a newer computer. Uh, it just depends. It's really no set thing I can tell you, but I've had many, many people that will will send me messages and ask me you know i'm having problems with the firm where i think i bricked my iron and no so far no one has actually bricked their iron uh but what they ended up having to do was try it multiple times on different operating systems or different computers most people have multiple computers uh, if one don't work try another one uh go to a friend's house try his computer i've had 
uh, I have luck with Windows 11 and Windows 10. And I've had people that had problems with either one of those. And then I uh, haven't tried Linux, but I've had people that had problems with uh, Linux systems. Um, and I, I think I had one person that had a problem with an, an Ubuntu uh, system, which are all variants of Linux. Uh, and what they found fixes it with the Linux system is to, when, when you take and hold the up arrow, as you plug it, it's plugged into the computer, you hold the up arrow and plug it into the USB-C port on the end of it, holding it, then it will boot up into a drive listed on your computer for a short period of time, at least on Windows. And then you grab your firmware and drop it on that drive. Then when you do, it automatically updates the firmware on the iron and you're good to go. If that doesn't work, try multiple computers, different operating systems, and usually you'll find it work. Uh, but on Linux systems, sometimes they've had problems and they've had to do it twice. In other words, they would go over there, uh, the drive would come up and they would drop it onto the drive and it wouldn't register. And then apparently there's kind of a ver variant, I think, of a file explorer on a Linux system and they would use that, the drive would come up and they would drop the firmware on it again and it would update the firmware. So if that makes sense to you, hopefully that's a fix if you're having problems with firmware updates. So uh, getting back to this iron as far as its, uh, its issues, uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that is cold to the touch. I mean, you can see, I wouldn't be touching it to my wrist if it wasn't cold. So, the cable. All right, you've seen these orange cables on my uh, channel before, and they are just some really sweet silicone rubber type uh, wire cables that I bought off of uh, AliExpress and Timu, I think. And uh, they're variants of different kinds. Uh, there's some that's like this one that has a USB A on one, and you pull that up and over, and you got a USB C underneath it. And then on the other end of it, it's a lightning connector or a USB-C. So it's a multi-function, and I've got multiple of these. I really like them. And I've got some, I think I've got one that has a USB-C and USB mini or micro and USB-A or C, A and C combination. And then this one, is USB-C on each end. This one is a cable time 240 watt PD 3.1 lightning cable. I bought this on, I think I got this one on AliExpress. It's got metal uh, deals on each end of it, USB-C's on each end of it. It's about six foot long. And this cable I bought because I did not have a PD 3.1 version cable for my GAN power supply. Um, and then, so with this cable, I found it and I was like, well, let's give it a shot. And I was kind of surprised at the results. So let's take and plug this in into the 140 watt PD 3.1 and on this side we're going to I'm just gonna plug it in and start it and then I'll go to the sub menu and show you that it's a hundred percent so here we go plugged in again holding it it's not hot we're gonna hit it and there she goes, it's jumping up to 330 Celsius. You see the smoke coming off of it, I hope. It's at 330 Celsius, 20 volts. It's running at full, full throttle. This, this iron is running 100%. And so let's go into handle set. You can see 100%, 20 volts Celsius. So this iron is running 100% and it is the exact same power supply 
that I have never been able to run this iron at 100% on. It is simply using the PD 3.1 port with a PD 3.1 cable. So the cable you're using with this iron is very, very important. In addition to that, the cable that you are, uh, the port that you're using. So again, uh, that GAN power supply, is, I, I use it because it's got so many ports on it and so many different protocols. And it is like a little bench power supply that I use to charge everything on this bench. Cameras, the whole nine yard, everything that I deal with, I can charge with that. And now I can run this iron at 100% with the PD 3.1 cable. Now this, these cables can be expensive. I think I paid $14 for, for this from AliExpress. I can't give you a link because that stuff just don't stay long enough, but look for the one that has the metal ends on it, USB-Cs on each end. And it is, this one's called a cable time. Um, and this side says cable time and it's got an orange lightning bolt. And this side, side says 240 watt PD 3.1 with a black lightning bolt. I don't know if those make a difference. I know a USB-C you can turn it over one way and it works one way and the other way and it works another way. So this cable is cheap. It works great. It's resistive to heat. It's everything that you want. Six foot is really good to be able to work with for this. And so it's my cable to use this iron. And so now I get to use this iron a whole lot more with my existing power supply and my search for a power supply is over with. I, I've had it all along. I've just not been able to use the PD 3.1. So the answer to run this iron at 100% get you, and this is a cheap Chinese power supply. Again, check out my past video on this power supply. All the specs, all the details, everything on it is put out there. So uh, it, it, I think it was $34 for the power supply. This cable is uh, $14 and you got a bench top set up and you can charge anything you want with it. Uh, I definitely recommend that. I'll try to put details in the uh, description about this and pop up cards as far as the power supply uh, video. Um, but look, guys, this, this fixes your problem. Uh, there, there is one comment about a plug-in, which is like a Walwart style uh, deal that you'd plug a cord into the, the deal in the wall and plug it into the um, soldering iron. <laughs> My brain's misfiring on me. Uh, plug it into the soldering iron and it works with it. Uh, just check the comments on my past videos and you'll see the uh, specs on that particular power supply. But I would venture to say any GAN style, and this is a 260 watt GAN style uh, power supply, but anything with uh, 260 or higher, uh, cheap Chinese or otherwise, and cheap Chinese or otherwise, this type of PD 3.1 cable. As long as you got that PD 3.1 port on that power supply, I think you can power this iron just fine at 100%. Uh, percent and you can take care of business. So uh, that's all I got on this. If you got questions, comments, please put them below. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I hope this helps you. And I would ask that you would like and subscribe. I thank you and we will see you again. Your time is very important to me and I thank you for spending it here with me. Thanks and God bless.